so much like a car would. And thank you, each one of you, for your silent tears, for your e-cars, emails, your prayers, your thoughts, that you have been sending to the Blake family as we deal with the death of our brother, James. I want to thank the church, especially for the beautiful spray, same spray, that was very visible at the memorial service. And the prank from the casting family. So you were very much with us at the service, before the service, and you continue to be with us. So keep the prayers going, the thoughts going, because that would thank you very, very wonderful. So on behalf of the Blake family, Dr. Carl Blake, our sister Eileen Blake, we want to thank you very much for your presence. It's wonderful cause. Just knowing that you were with us made a very, very great difference. Thank you. Let the words of my mouth that proceed from the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Parable of the Sower. All that you touch, you change. Father, 
although she questions some of his Christian understandings. After several disappearances in the community, by community members, the community is really on edge. And one day, Lauren's father does not return home. They search for him, they search for him. Days go by, he does not return home. So he is presumably dead. Later, I think some months later, the pyromaniacs sack Lawrence Town of Rodrigo. The town is torched. Many inhabitants are killed, including Lawrence's stepmother and her brothers. But rather than heading to Los Angeles, the South, which is close to where she lives, Lauren heads north. She had thought about going north before with her boyfriend. He had wanted to leave and go north. Now he's presumed in. No one has seen him. So Lauren heads north, hoping that somehow she and two other residents will find, along with those who will join her later, would find paid work somewhere. And so they leave the south of California, head north, and she gives a, a description but her, of what happened at each place as they were fires being killed, Lauren having to shoot somebody a couple times because what went on, this kind of stuff that's just really quite amazing and very disturbing at times. <coughs> but all along the way, Lauren keeps a journal. And in her journal, she has entries about a new belief system, different from her father's, a new belief system and a community she hopes to establish. Her belief system is based on the idea that God is change, the only lasting truth, and that humanity should shape God so that God can be more relevant in and to the lives of the people. She calls this belief system Earth Seed. E A R T H S E E D. Seeding the earth, sowing what must grow to fruition in themselves, ourselves, and the future. Reverend Cecil Williams, who recently passed, incarnated the idea that God is changed. He incorporated that in his own personal ministry, his ministry of personal and social change. He enthusiastically felt that the yearnings for dignity and freedom that resided within the wounds of people, a longing for personal and social transformation, could be fortified. The closeted self could be liberated and sustained by God. He once related a story about how a former associate who hadn't seen him in years approached him in a negative tone and stated, Ma, you changed. <laughs> and he responded, Ma, you haven't changed. <laughs> Just as he had changed so many lives through this extraordinary ministry, and it has been an extraordinary ministry for Jesus of Williams, he too had been changed. We sometimes get rid of the road of preaching street called Dashi. 
He took down the cross and died church sanctuary because he felt that it led people to worship death rather than life. His title was the Ministry, Ministry of Liberation and Celebration. Isn't life about change? We have not the same body we had in the early years. We changed physically. Hopefully, mentally, our minds are expanded. So, why shouldn't our God change as we have changed? The great Indian poet Tagore, one of my favorite poets, said that when we were children, God was our playmate. That's the form that God took. And it was that that caused us to wonder, to stray away as children, to have fun, to, to enjoy ourselves, to imagine, to create that playmate God. That was the form of God. Do you see God the same way that you did when you were 14, 15? What happened along the way that guided you into a different understanding of God? Did you search, did you search for an experience of genuine inner self altered the notion of the punishing self righteous and law bearing the heart? Yes, the human spirit does long for a consistency, a constancy, for stability in the form of things that don't change. We like things not to change, to remain the same. And for God to be omnipresent so that we are assured that God is with us in the most difficult hours and needful situations. We want to know that God is there. The author of the hymn, Abide With Me, calls for constancy. This beautiful hymn. The state of presence is for God is to be there. At the time of the most profound change in life, that is the death. The second stanza reads, Swift to his close, ebbs out life's little day. First joys go in, his glories pass away. Change and decay, and all around me, Oh, thou who changes not, abide with me. It's so beautiful. And it gives a kind of assurance that we do not die alone. There is this presence that brought us into the system, is with us now. So, this desire is not a contradiction with the concept that God has changed. My brother James understood this, that within the constancy of God, there was change which he accepted. The God the change idea is seated within God as all pervading and dependable. But it says the only lasting truth. The great writer Wilker pens these words, impermanence pledges us into the death of all being. And so all forms of the present are not to be taken and bound in time, but held in a larger context of meaning in which we participate. So I can read this type of thing. I don't mean this in a Christian sense, in this parentheses, for which I ever more passionately distance myself in those parentheses. But in a sheer earthly, deeply earthly, sacred earthly consciousness that we, the 
what we see here and now is to bring us into a wider, indeed, the very widest dimension. Not in the afterlife who shadow darkens the earth, but in a hole that is the whole Regularly on my own journey in life, and as I share my life with others, especially some of the students, I turn to the pastors and the Gordon Edge, which I know Dr. Benson also loves pretty much, for it speaks profoundly to what I am trying to say today. Look well to the Gordon all around us, worlds are dying, and new worlds are being born. All around us, life is dying, and life is being born. The fruit ripens on the tree, the roots are fighting away at the birth of the darkness of the earth. At just the time, there shall be new leaves, fresh blossoms, green fruit, such is the green edge. It is the extra breath from the exhaust of the breath. The one more thing to try when all else has failed. The upward reach of luck, where weariness closes in upon all endeavor. This is the basis of hope in moments of despair. The incentive to carry on when times are out of joint and people have lost their reason. The source of confidence when the worlds crash and dreams whiten to ash. The birth of the child lies the most dramatic answer to death. This is the growing edge and color. Look well to the growing edge. To this space of change unfolding within that which is constant. Worlds are dying, but there are still worlds. Life is dying, and life is being born. There shall be new leaves. There shall be fresh blossoms and green fruit. There shall be this upper reach of life when weariness closes in upon all endeavor. This dynamic of life pouring into death, and death pouring into life, of constancy pouring into change, and change into constancy, is the basis of hope to carry us forward who we don't seem to know who we are, where we stand, or the next step to take. When times are out of joy, and we feel like giving up, but afraid to do so. In the activist Val Dijon, these words appear. Change does not come from helpless or persuasion. From injustice, it is the rule. Justice always lies in wait. When oppression flourishes, freedom ever looks. When death is the threat, light springs into being. The darkness of power unknowing contains the seeds of a bright new life. Learn, O ye, O Nina's band, find reach a place that each agree was solitary. Along the way, all these people have joined Lauren as she's gone. They've all come from desperate situations where their family their lives have been stay. If she continues to go and she bring and she brings in these people, they come with their stories. And sometimes they wonder, who are the strangers? But she has, according to what this disease inherited from her mother, of uh, being overly sympathetic with people. She empathizes with people and their problems. So she accepts all who come and want to be part of this reality. And the place that they come to is a place for the land, Van Cole, who was 
said, y'all, we don't know what happened. But his family owned this place. He kept saying, there's a place in the north. My family owned it. My sister, my brother-in-law are there. And we can settle there. We can't, we can't, we can't watch the news. Well, when they arrived, that place has been burned also. There's no one in the house. Crops destroyed. And there are dead bodies there, presumably. But Lauren and others talked about this shut, which simply sat here and tried to begin this new life. And so they all agreed that the place is salvageable. Although it has been burned and destroyed. Depressing as it was, Olomina thought that it was a place where they could shape God for they to be a community an earth seed community with the values she has shared along the journey she said this to one of the members it might survive change but still itself another member responded to her no Human beings will survive, of course. Some other countries will survive. Maybe they'll absorb what is left of us. Or maybe we'll break up into a lot of little states, quarreling and fighting with each other over whatever crumbs are left. That's almost happening now with states shutting themselves off from one another, treating state lines as national borders. I don't think you can understand what we lost. Perhaps Later, Omena would speak again after they buried the dead. Those on the journey that had been courted that day said prayers. So she says, So today we remembered it, the friends and the family members. We lost. We spoke our individual memories and quoted Bible passages, earth sea verses, and bits of songs and poems that were favorites of the living or the dead. Then we buried our dead and we planted oak trees. Afterward, we sat together and talked and ate a meal and decided to call this place a barn. The author, Olivia Butler, adds his final biblical touch to the end of the novel. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was spun up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it, and choked it. And others fell on good ground, and sprang up, and bore fruit and hundredfold. All that you touch, you change. All that you change, changes you. The only lasting truth is change. God. 